Good afternoon and welcome to the City of Glendale Arts and Culture Commission meeting uh, for January 13th, 2020. May I have roll call, please? Commissioner Zoshigan? Yes. Bayar? Yes. Vice Chair Zadorian? Here. Chairperson Vidor? Here. For the record, Commissioner Tufankian is not present. The agenda for the January 16th meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall on January 13, 2020. Next item. Item two, consent items at 2A, approval of regular meeting minutes from December 19th, 2019. Any additions or corrections to the minutes from the last meeting? Okay, I just have one. Um, on the welcoming of uh, Commissioner Viar, um, that the commission welcomed Commissioner Viar. <laughs> uh, so, um, can we have a, a motion to accept the minutes of the last meeting as amended? I make a motion to uh, approve the minutes as amended. Second. I second. Roll call. Commissioners Oshigan? Yes. Viar? Yes. Vice Chair Zadorian? Yes. Chairperson Vidor? Yes. Next item, please. Item three, introductions and presentations. At 3A, Certificate of, Preci of Appreciation, Kathy, Kathy Herenda, Adams Hill Neighborhood Association, presented by Arlene Vidor, Chairperson. Okay, well, um, we have a little slideshow. Um, I'm very pleased today to recognize uh, artist Kathy Horenda, uh, who lives in the Adams Hill area for some of the great work she has done, uh, artistically speaking, uh, for the community over the last five years. Um, so maybe we can just do a little summary here. Um, Kathy began to do art installations during holiday season in the Adams Square Mini Park in 2015, and what you see here is a picture of her piece, Our Starry Night, which consisted of stars floating in the sky and a very whimsical, beautiful um, uh, reproduction of the Adams Hill neighborhood. Um, and one of the things that has um, been the signature of Kathy's art installations throughout the five years she's done them is that she engages uh, the students of John Muir School to prepare pieces uh, of uh, artwork to decorate uh, and enhance her sculptural pieces. And she also has uh, convenes the community in Adams Square on an art making day to put things together. And as you see in this slide, uh, this is uh, people working on the houses for the Our Starry Night exhibit. And um, we, we, um, we I'm, I'm also a resident of the neighborhood and it's a very diverse neighborhood and what's amazing about uh, these sessions is that Kathy is able to solicit participation of all age groups uh, and people of all different stripes. There's often many languages being spoken, sometimes people that come don't speak English, uh, and it's really, really a confluence of cultures coming in to, uh, to do this activity. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Um, and then in 2016, if that wasn't enough, um, Kathy again uh, prepared a piece called Peace on Earth, uh, which was a very large um, assemblage of the word peace. And then um, she had school children prepare uh, doves to float over this peace uh, installation. And another thing that Kathy has been doing is using discarded materials and uh, recyclables to make her installation. So there's also an environmental component, which is also very much appreciated by everybody. Um, in 2017, uh, Kathy made, uh, the, the, the installation seemed to get more and more complex as the years go on. <laughs> and in 2017, uh, she designed uh, uh, an assemblage called We're All in the Same Boat, which showed a figure uh, and different figures in, uh, in a boat uh, representing that we all share so much in common with each other and uh, again engaged John Muir School as well as the community. Uh, you see here uh, her on the left with her uh, husband Stephen Meek 
um, and uh, she's prepared all of these uh, subcomponents for uh, the community to put together and to help uh, decorate the exhibit. Um, and then um, in 2018, Kathy really went into a new realm and um, developed a moving sculpture called Moving Toward a Bright Future, which included many components that were activated by a, um, a sensing, a motion sensor detector. So when you went by the installation, it suddenly came to life and started doing all kinds of amazing things. Uh, quite a contraption, and everybody was absolutely amazed. And then you see on the right um, that the people in the park who come to the park decorated the perimeter of the inside of the gas station, and the community colored all of those drawings in uh, to help enhance the exhibit in 2018. Um, and here you see people working on those drawings. Um, Everybody comes down, and it's usually a very joyful event. And, um, and then there's, of course, some recognition uh, for, for those who participated. Uh, go on to the next slide. Um, and here you see uh, this year, well, not this year anymore. We're in 2020 now. But in 2019, uh, Kathy did something called the Adams Hill Family Tree. Uh, which also um, was not necessarily a, a typical fir tree, seasonal fir tree, but really was put together with various uh, components to look like the type of tree one sees in Adams Hill and that represents the community. And there were many components to it. I could probably do a, you know, a whole hour-long thing on what each of these things, but <laughs> we, don't, we don't have time. But what you see here is an example of the pictures uh, that decorate each exhibit. Um, on the left there with the people who are working on the exhibit and helping to prepare it. So the community gets some acknowledgment. Um, you see on the lower right there, Kathy with some people at our annual caroling event, so every year we um, in Adams Hill do a seasonal uh, reception for the community and having those art installations down there at the time uh, is very, very fantastic and we're really fortunate uh, to have Kathy there to put all this together, not only physically but the amount of community coordination that it takes. You can see on the upper right um, there are a variety of animals made out of cardboard that Kathy put together that um, decorate the, 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 the space under the tree. So it's quite magical. And uh, these are all done voluntarily. Uh, this is not part of the uh, Urban Art Fund. It's a special community effort. And I think, and we, we all agreed a couple of years ago, it was important for us to recognize people in the community um, who do a lot for the arts that um, may not be part of the Urban Art Fund activities. And um, so this is our first, and there is nobody more deserving of this uh, than Kathy. And I'd just like to read a couple letters that came in. Um, uh, there are some people here, but um, we got one letter from Patty Silvisher, who says um, that she turned out it was able, she, she was able to attend, and she's here. And uh, she wanted to honor Kathy Horenda for her magnanimous effort put into the ex exhibitions at our Adams uh, Square Mini Park. This award is so well deserved, and it'll be an honor to be there and see her receive it. A great way to start the new year. Uh, and then uh, another board member from the Adams Hill Neighborhood Association says, Thank you for recognizing, this is to the commission, thank you for recognizing Kathy Horenda for five successful years of celebrating the arts while promoting holiday spirit in Adams Hill through her seasonal community art projects. Kathy's inclusive engagement with the community in creating her exhibits has inspired creativity throughout Adams Hill across generations and diverse backgrounds. We appreciate what she has done to revitalize the Adams Square Mini Park as a cultural destination that attracts visitors from Glendale and beyond Kathy's recurring theme of recycling waste into art also promotes social responsibility and resourcefulness. As a longtime officer of the Adams Hill Neighborhood Association, I can attest to Kathy's significant contribution 
in fostering community pride in our neighborhood. Our residents are grateful beneficiaries of her talent and dedication to the South Glendale cultural landscape. That's from Ron D. Werner, Vice President of the Adams Hill Neighborhood Association. So without further ado, <laughs> I'd like to come down to the podium, and Kathy, if you'll come up and present this to you. And then I guess there's a photo op in there somewhere, so. <laughs> everybody from the people in the Adams Hill Neighborhood Association who have been so supportive of everything I've done and all the way down to mom and dad who show up with their kids to participate because without participation it's not a community art project yeah, that's so right. that's what's the difference between a group of houses and a neighborhood so thank you thank, thank you very much Next item. Okay, uh, oh, sure. Can I say something? Comments, yeah. absolutely. Oh, yes. uh, yeah. Just moving You're along. Like moving along here. Yeah. Right. Um, um, I want to thank you, Kathy. I want to congratulate you for this very deserved um, certificate. I want to thank you for the work that you do for the community. And the two things that you do that's been repeated, I think, are really critical is using uh, recycling material to make art, which is very, I think, contemporary or very relevant to our uh, economy and our, and our global um, changes that are happening in our global eco ecosystem, as well as the fact that it's community engagement. I think that's really, really critical. So I think it's the great, what you're doing is great, and I think, I hope you continue to do it. I hope actually, I was thinking now, how, what is the next step for Kathy, is what I was thinking. <laughs> uh <-oh>. And <laughs> New assignment. Uh, new assignment, I mean, there are, other, there are other neighborhoods, right? We are, we are a city um, that you could expand to other neighborhoods. I know we don't have, Every neighborhood doesn't have a mini park like, like yeah. uh, Adams Hill, but it's possible to do public art in other communities and bring out the community, get them engaged in art and pride and create pride in their community. So I urge you <laughs> to uh, come up with new ideas and come to us and we'd be very happy to yeah. support you <laughs> in expanding your holiday kind of art making. So thank you again for being in our community. Thanks. Thanks. Anyone else? I like to go right off, <laughs> piggyback off of that. I agree with him because I've, I've come to the Adams Hills uh, Mini Park and I've seen what you and your husband do for that community. Um, obviously, it's a community that's very engaged and we want everybody in Glendale to be as engaged. So you guys set a very good example of what we're looking for when it comes to arts and culture in Glendale. So thank you very much. It's beautiful. And thank you for involving kids in the mm. process. It's amazing what you do. Thank you. Okay, so um, yes, I, I also agree, and I think that you know we probably have to turn Kathy into Jeff Koons and get her an entire factory, uh, but I think we'll it's support that. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's a, it's well received uh, suggestion to think about how this is an example uh, for the rest of the community and how we can you know bring the concept of what Kathy is doing out into other neighborhoods. So. Feel free to not go anywhere so we can tap you for advice anyway. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. So next, uh, and thank you all from Adams uh, Hill for being here today to support this. Uh, next item, please. At 3B, Library Arts and Culture Events presented by Jennifer Futomi Jones, Arts and Culture Administrator. Uh-oh. There we go. Thank you, GTV6. Um, so Jennifer Fukutomi <laughs> Jones, Arts and Culture Administrator uh, with the Library Arts and Culture Department, uh, coming up uh, what's happening in the library. Um, so we're very, speaking of Adams Square um, Mini Park Gas Station, from January 21st to February 14th, the Arts and Culture Commission through funding from the Urban Art Program will be sponsoring a temporary art installation by artist Lucas Novak focused on stop motion claymation films and paintings. So that'll be coming up next Tuesday. We're very mm -hmm. excited for that. So come and check that out. 
uh, up at the Baran Library and Arts Center, a unique art experience that probes the boundaries of body and being, so through actual and virtual space. Curated by Laura Darlington and Selva Sweden, Body Embodiment features 25 pioneering female, non-binary, and trans artists exhibiting work in a dizzying <coughs> array of media, including sculpture, video, animation, ceramics, textile, printmaking, photography, installation, performance, and virtual and augmented reality. Physicality, identity, and presence are explored, and biological systems from the primordial to the post-human are examined and transfigured by technology. Situating the body as a form and function, material and process, site and portal, these artists investigate the potentialities mm -hmm. of the human condition. There will be a public open reception, opening reception on Saturday, January 25th from 6 to 9, featuring a special interactive live performance of Proximity Cinema, Cinema by Tiffany Trenda. Curators and artists will be in attendance, so hope you come out to Brand Library to see this amazing exhibit. Next up, we have the Brand Associates Music Series on, ja on Saturday, January 25th from 2 to 4 p.m. Join us for a concert by the acclaimed Argus Quartet, who returns to Los Angeles with a program including music by Bedrick Smentana, Catherine Balk, and Fandy Mendelssohn Hensel. And on Saturday, February 8th from 2 to 4 p.m., join us for a concert which will feature bassist Jory Herman, violinist Michelle Sang, and actress narrator Chloe Wyatt Taylor. Michelle and Jory are members of the LA Philharmonic, and Chloe has an extensive background as an actress of stage and screen, as well as a singer and choreographer. Admission is free, and the music series is sponsored by the Brand Associates. And up next, we have Access, a Century of the Women's Right to Vote. Um, this year marks the centennial milestone women gained access to, <coughs> access to the political process with the, vote, with the right to vote in the United States. Despite the passage of the 19th Amendment, women of color did not gain that right until much later, and vast numbers of women remained disenfranchised and excluded from the political process. The latest uh, exhibit at Reflect Space Gallery at the Glendale Central Library, Access, a Century After Women's Right to Vote, examines the past 100 years of women's rights through the work of several contemporary art women artists and considers women's roles today and their access to positions of power. Uh, join us for an opening reception on Friday, January 31st at 7 to 9 p.m. for a panel discussion featuring a diverse group of artists, educators, and writers who will explore the question, have women achieved empowerment and access to the power and right to vote? Uh, Commissioner Oshigan, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, yeah, so we are very excited about uh, opening this next exhibition called Access. Uh, and as Jennifer said, um, we have a really good, interesting lineup, a really great artists, artists who show in different museums, um, local artists also. So we're very, very fortunate to have women artists who not only reflect on the, on the past, or what happened during the, 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 the battle, the struggle to get voting rights, but also what's happened in the past 100 years. And so I urge everybody to come out. We're going to have a very interesting artist talk on opening night. Um, and uh, it'll be very stimulating, I think, and challenging. So please, please come out to the library. Great. Thank you. Is, is that it? OK. Um, next item. Item four, <laughs> oral communications. There are none. Okay. Item five, action items. At 5A, selection of a, chair, of a chairperson to serve a one-year term beginning January 2020. Okay. Um, I think we're going to now have a nomination for a new chair. And um, I would like to nominate a new chair. Um, I'd like to nominate Savannah Zadorian to become the chair of the commission for the next year, 2020. Do you accept the no Oh, do, well, are there other nominations? <laughs> are there other nominations? Do we need a second to no, the nomination? No, we don't need a no. second. No, we don't need a second. Um, we need to know if there are other nominations. And there aren't, so um, we're pleased to place your name in nomination, and we can take a vote if that's OK with you. It's OK we, with me. We need to do roll call. Uh, yes, we'll do roll call. I don't think we need to review um, the candidate's qualifications, so we'll go right to the a, roll call. <laughs> can we get a speech by the candidate? <laughs> One time. Why, should I, why should I vote for it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Commissioners Oshigan? Yes. Bayar? Yes. Vice Chair Zadorian? Yes. <laughs> Chairperson Vidor? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much.
So, so now we pass the gavel. Pass the gavel. Fun. And we'll put you front and center. All right, we're switching right now. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And our new chair takes over. So. Do we vote for the vice chair? Next. I like you on that side. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> may I say my so, thank yous now, or should I wait till later? Yes. Right now is OK. Right. okay. Um, I want to obviously thank our incredible staff. Uh, I, I don't feel like I say that enough. And we're very lucky because we work together in unison, and it's been very nice to have you guys and have Jennifer on the team now, which makes things much easier for all of us. And thank you for listening to us and dealing with all of our comments and concerns and kind of annoyances. So thank you. And thank you to the commission. I wish Caroline was here, but uh, I've enjoyed this process because I look at other commissions and I think, wow, we're so lucky because we all get along. Um, obviously, it's not the most <laughs> contested commission. Um, our decisions aren't as hotly debated. But we get along, and it's been a very enjoyable process. And I'm lucky to have worked with all of you because I'm learning from each one of you, different perspectives. Um, so uh, thank you for all of your mentorship from all of you. And specifically, thank you to Arlene, because these are very big shoes to fill. Um, but I'm lucky that I have you next to me, physically and, you know, we all have your back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, they're very big shoes to fill, and your passion and the way that you have led has been incredible to watch. Mm. Um, so thank you, and I hope I'm able to fill those shoes oh. and that you'll still answer my questions even though I'm the chair now. No doubt. <laughs> because you can only just teach me more. So no thank doubt. you to everybody, and thank you for voting for mm -hmm. me. And I'm looking very forward to this year. I hope we do great things. Thank mm -hmm. you. And before we you, you go to the next item, yes. I would just like to say that, um, echo uh, what Savannah said about the staff, I know that we, we can be uh, times demanding <laughs> and asking a lot of questions. Um, we're obviously all, including myself, big advocates of the arts in Glendale and want things to move forward and improve and expand, um, so we're probably uh, not the, we get along, we all get along very well. We may not be the easiest commission to manage because we're, you know, it's like herding kittens, but I think that um, this is a fabulous commission and it was a pleasure to be the chair for a year and I'm v feeling very happy and thrilled to turn the gavel over to my colleagues, uh, Savannah Zadorian. So thank you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, next item. Item 5B, selection of vice chairperson to serve a one-year term beginning January 2020. Um, I would like to go ahead and make a nomination for Caroline Tufankian, who is not present at the moment. But um, so does she need to accept, or can we go ahead and vote for her? <laughs> Our attorney. Chair. <coughs> Chair, I don't think it's working. Sure. Zadorian and com Commission. Um, you can go forward with uh, it. Um, has anyone in the, on the committee talked to her? Yes. Okay. Did she say that if she were nominated, she would accept? I believe so, yes. Okay. Then you can go forward with it. Okay. Um, if there, is there any other nomination for vice chair to be made? No? Okay. Then we can go ahead and move forward with the vote. Roll call. Roll call. Sorry. Okay. Commissioners o Oshigan? Yes. Bayor? Yes. Vidor? Yes. Chairperson Zadorian? Yes. Okay. Okay. Next item. At 5C, selection of the Glendale Unified School District first, second, and third place winner of the Hollywood Burbank Airport Tower Banner Art Competition. Okay. All right, Jennifer Hukutomi Jones, Arts and Culture Administrator. Uh, we're very lucky today. We have some fantastic artists who are in the audience today. So the Hollywood Burbank Airport Authority and Glendale Unified School District respectfully request uh, the commission review and select the best qualified artwork for the 2020 Tower Banner Competition. Each year since 2007, the Bur Hollywood Burbank Airport Authority has invited all Burbank, Glendale, and Pasadena Unified School District high school students 
in grades 9 through 12 to enter the Hollywood Burbank Airport Student Art Tower Banner Contest. This year, each school district presented to the Hollywood Burbank Airport its top three entries that best depict the theme of futures of aviation. The Arts and Culture Commission from respective city uh, is asked to consider the three entries and make a final selection of one entry from its school district based on the judging criteria and the contest rules and regulations. In Glendale, the district has selected the top three entries from 20 submissions. Um, the commission is now selected to choose um, the first, second, and third place winners from the top three Glendale Unified School District entries. Once the finalists are selected, the winning artwork will be translate, translated into a large banner measuring 17 by 26 feet, a portrait, which will be displayed on the facade of the airport terminal tower for approximately three months, where it will be seen by well over one million travelers and airport visitors as they arrive and depart from the terminal. In addition, the winning artwork may be displayed at other airport facilities on street banners. A $3,000 reward will be given to each school district in honor of the winning entry, and that award will serve as a license fee for the airport authority's exclusive use of the winning art for a two-year license period. The school district will agree to stipulate that the award will be used when, uh, to support and promote their respective education programs to the arts. Once the three winning entries have been chosen by the Arts and Culture Commissions, the order of their display will be determined by the airport authority. Selection criteria for the visuals of the top three entries are attached for the commission's review. You have it as your exhibit uh, one, and uh, I'm sorry, exhibit two. Uh, entries are asked to be evaluated and judged against the following basic criteria. Thematic accuracy, visual display, artistic merit, merit creativity, and overall visual composition. Each commissioner will review and judge the entries independently uh, using the attached criteria and scoring rubric. Uh, you all have copies of each, which you'll uh, use for your scoring rubrics, uh, and should be prepared to announce his or her scores uh, at today, the January 16th, 2020 commission meeting. During the meeting, these scores for the three Glendale Unified School District entries will be recorded and used to determine the first, second, and third place order. The results will be announced during the meeting. So we have um, the first entry, and we're gonna ask each commissioner to live well, not live tweet, live vote <laughs> mm -hmm. in the room, and you have your scoring rubrics. So we have our first finalist here, which is also displayed there, and we'll take a, a few moments to to score the actual artwork, and then once we feel like everyone has had their time, then we'll move on to the next finalist. Um, question. Did you say all three will be displayed, but in, or in the one, the, the final? The one. The one chance. will be displayed for three months yes. only. Mm -hmm. What happens the rest of the months on that airport? They're, <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> from what I understand, and, and Dr. Altabelli can probably answer some more questions specifically regarding the, the transition of the banners, um, but it's each school district. Oh, I see. So, okay. Yeah, Thank for the year. Maybe we can give a nod <laughs> once you're done scoring this final. Okay. Are you okay? I thought we were supposed to do it ahead of time. <laughs> the The goal was to look at the artwork ahead of time, but the live scoring takes place. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, for all three? Oh, the, for just the first one? Just the first Are we one. good for the first one? Okay. okay. I'm going to move on to the second one. Are we good on this selection? Yeah. And this is the third finalist.
once you've completed your scoring your books, you can move them this way and we will tally them up. And then, um, Mr. Grant, do you want to share how we'll present the first, second, and third? Each commissioner will proceed to, yes. to, sh to um, uh, share how they ranked each artwork and then we will tally up the scores and announce the first place and second place and third. Are you collecting them? Yeah. Okay. This, you want just number one? Sure. Mm -hmm. total it. Should I be totaling it? <laughs> um, did you want each one or uh, like all together? We can have them all. You can pass them down and I can sort them. Just just number one? You no, can all, pass them all this all way and I can sort them. Oh, okay. Sorry. They should have tallied all of them. I know we've done this before. <laughs> I believe at this point we wanted to invite each of the artists to come and introduce themselves and then we'll go by commissioner on the votes. Okay. Do we want to have the first finalists come up to the podium? Um, good afternoon. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, when I think about the future, I think about technology and how the technology is advancing and my inspiration behind the design was uh, artificial intelligence, therefore I created a design with a robot pilot using the low poly tool to give the uh, design dimension and to capture the metallic look of the, the robot and uh, give it depth and to have the robot be the center of the design and capture the eye of the audience and the background has the uh, futuristic planes that will be in that will be created in the future in my idea of what it would look like and um, I overall I think my design um, uh, my design conveys the idea that technology will be the center of our future and the center of our uh, the future of the aviation thank you, thank you. The next uh, should we have the next finalist you it's been an honor working on this um, my drawing represents comparing the past to the present or the future of aviation and it's represented by this girl and what looks to be a, a plane from our time compared to the future where we might live in um, I want to say it's just been an honor honored to work on this with such amazing peers with me and my teacher. Um, thank you very much. And should we have the third finalist? Um, I just want to say I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Um, I was inspired mainly by the steps we've taken to get to the future of aviation. Um, May Jemison, she was the first woman in space, and just the fact that family is the future, and um, that's basically what inspired it. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. While you are you still tallying? Still tallying. Then <laughs> we can go ahead and make some comments on each one. Um, Ara, would you like to start? Actually, I'd like to know what schools you're from, and actually your names, you know, you yeah. no names yeah. here, you're like this anonymous group of mm -hmm. students. And Jennifer, do you know that, or should we ask? The, the students can announce their names, but the request was that they, they are all from the Glendale area, so they don't have to necessarily say which high school they're from. They're from the Glendale <laughs> oh, Unified yeah, School that District last year. You was the request. Say, I know what you want was to say. <laughs> Yes, of course. Uh, the teacher requested that they Right. So. Oh, it's, yes. It's done, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Great, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you can yeah. go ahead and state it, or if we want to invite them back up. We can invite them back. Would you, finalist number one like to come up? Um, my name is Rosa Tarosin, and I'm from Clark Magnet High School. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Chloe Baker, and I'm from Herbert Hoover High School. Nice. Thank you. 
name is Donna Choi, and I'm also from Herbert Hoover High School. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Great. Oh, go ahead. Come. We're going to start from the left and go to the right from now on. I always seem to start. Oh, so from now ahead. on, it's always going to be It's going to stay organized like that. <laughs> Sometimes we can start from the right, but we're going to okay. keep it clear. Um, I want to thank you and commend you. You know, I know everybody's very busy. I have two kids. Oh, I have. I have four kids, two or three of them are in middle school and high school. <laughs> I forgot how many kids you had. Yeah. Well, I have one in high school. I know it's, it's, very, it's very challenging time. It's about yeah. always a constant time management, which certainly wasn't in our time. But these days, it's like that. And it's difficult to work on projects outside of the classroom. So I really appreciate you putting that effort into it and making these drawings. And I know it takes a long time, difficult to make them. So I want to commend you for that, and I hope, and you know, uh, whether you're first or second or third, I think you should, uh, being here at this point, out of all of the ones who actually submitted, uh, that, uh, that means that means a huge thing. You know, I, um, I compete with other artists all the time, and just being a finalist is a huge thing for me. You know, being the f f winner is, is extremely difficult, but just being a finalist is huge, so I commend you for that and being here. Um, I don't know. I mean, do we want to comment on the artwork? I yeah, think, yeah. I think they're all um, they're all unique in their dif in their different ways, and it was difficult for me to really d decide which one would be uh, um, would be the best in terms of the. So you have to also consider it isn't a gallery. It's not being placed in a gallery, right? It's being placed in this very public place where people are going to see it from very far away, uh, and so that's also very important for me in terms of how what elements. Will play into that. Um, so I mean, that's it. I mean, you know, my, my, go ahead. You, you guys can, can comment okay. on the work. You like. um, yeah. Thank you all. I mean, you know, I think I <clears throat> admire people who put themselves out there. I mean, you're going to be judged, and mm -hmm. there's, you know, when there's a winner and a second place and a third place, that's. You know, have a, there's heavy baggage there, but the, there, there doesn't need to be because you've all proven your work speaks for itself. You're all excellent artists, and uh, you all made individual, really unique statements about aviation. And of the three, um, and I had written down things, and I was really relieved uh, to hear like that. That's what I thought. And like I wanted to write down my own interpretation of what I thought you were all trying to say. And I love the fact that you know one of you dealt with the you know the the automation and the tech the technological giant leaps that are being made and will be made in the future, and then where we've been and where we've gone, and then of course the third one into the galaxy with the whole family. So um, I think it's wonderful and very diverse interpretations. And I just like to thank you and your teachers and your families, uh, I'm sure you're all represented here for your support on this. It's just truly wonderful and very hard to make a decision. I'm very impressed with all of you because I, I practically failed art. <laughs> so um, the, the, they're just stunning, all of them. Um, and um, as I looked at them, let's see, Donna, you did the one with Mae Jemison um, in it. Is that? Oh, that was you. That's right. I'm sorry, Chloe. Right? And yes, sorry, Chloe. Um, and and when I saw that, it kind of reminded me too that January is the month we commemorate Amelia Earhart. And um, so I was uh, the the progress, the the social um, and cultural impact of that was. Um, was very evident to me. Um, I have to say that with Rosa, I was really surprised to see that a girl did the technology one, um, just because of the, because it looked like a man, <laughs> and so, and and so. Um, but I was just, I, the detail is just stunning. The perspective on of the robot set is is stunning. Thank you all. You're all very impressive, wonderful students. Um, I agree with all of uh, my colleagues in saying that I'm, I'm a little shocked that high school students created these pieces of art because I was in high school, I mean, not too long ago, and I know I could not create pieces like this. This is impressive, is just doesn't cover it. Um, 
I love that all three cover very different perspectives and they're very different themes. Uh, not themes, but um, ways to kind of show what the future of aviation is. And I like the way that it incorporates so many different ideas. And I love the way you guys described it. I mean, I would, I almost wish we would be able to hear the description before we vote, but obviously that can throw off um, how we vote. But it's incredible. I mean, the things that you guys are doing, I hope that you continue to create art throughout your lives. And even if it's not art, you're creating in general because these are this is amazing. And that maybe one day, if you stay in Glendale, you will be on this commission and you will decide the future of art in Glendale because we need this kind of innovative, uh, I, these kinds of innovative ideas and art in our city. So I would also recommend that we do keep in touch with the students um, for our Beyond the Box art program. I don't know if the three of you would be willing to create art on, I, I don't know if you've seen our utility boxes around the city have art on them. And we love incorporating students into that. We've had two done in front of Glendale High School. And so if we can incorporate you guys and have you maybe apply some time and, and put in some art, that would be great for our city. So thank you so much for putting yourselves out there, making yourselves vulnerable to this process and trusting us. So thank you. So we'll go ahead and start uh, backward, and I'm going to go ahead and announce the third place. Artwork is going to be finalist number three, Chloe. Um, thank you. Um, and just so you guys know, looking at these, none of them, they're very close. I mean, it's literally a, oh, I'm sorry. Technically, oh, okay, we averaged it. I'm sorry. There's literally a one point difference in the last two. And there's a two point difference in the first. So that's how close of a competition it was. In second place, we have our first finalist. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Rosa. Rosa. That's a beautiful name. So thank you, Rosa. You got second place. Incredible. <laughs> and in first place, we have finalist number two from Hoover High School. So thank you. Donna? Okay, Donna from Herbert High School. Thank you. you. You got first place, and so, sorry, I said, yeah, Herbert Hoover High School. Uh, and your artwork is going to be displayed. And what was the time period again? It's a three month period. Three month period. So that's a lot of people seeing that artwork. I, I remember last year, um, whoever had it up, I had people sending me texts like, oh my God, it looks great. It's huge. So congratulations. It's a very big accomplishment. I think if we can take a quick moment to have the commissioners each take a photo with each of the artists. Yes. If you want to come and uh, take your artwork artists, and then we can take a group photo. Yes. Oh, can we do it up here? Sure. Or should we do it down there? Whatever you should recommend. Should we go down there? Would you like to stay? Like I have to my Maybe we can come down there and huh. the artists can have their Yeah. Every time you take Good a photo, sneak these on. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, let me I'll grab the Thank you. 
Congratulations. I'm glad that was all recorded. Thank you. Okay. Arlene. still in session. Um, commissioners Arlene Vador and Vyar, <laughs> please, if we may be seated and continue our meeting. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> You've been summoned. She's going to suspend you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess we've been in session, so we can continue our meeting now. Thank you all for coming. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to our next item. Item six, discussion items. At 6A, 2019-2020 work plan progress. Okay, um, so we start with the uh, citywide arts. So first we had the State of the Urban Art Program Plan Community Update meeting took place on January 9th, 2020. It was an opportunity for stakeholders to learn more about the urban art program and arts and culture priorities. So this is a discussion item, if commissioners would like to comment. Where are you okay. starting from that side today? Let's go ahead and start with it, Commissioner Oshagan. Be, all right. <laughs> you can switch it up every once in a while. I will, I will, I promise. <laughs> right now it's, it's your day. Um, uh, so reflecting on this meeting, I thought it was really an excellent meeting. I think there was a lot of uh, expectation for the meeting, and I could, and we knew that from the community, and you know, I think we saw that from the members of the community who were there. Um, I think um, the commissioner Arlene did a very good presentation of the overall vision, as well as the staff. Thank you for all the preparation for that. Uh, I knew it took some time, and I took, I knew it took some resources, but. Um, from the staff and then from the library, but I think it was really, really important kind of touchstone for us. 
You know, I got, I got actually a couple of comments from people saying, oh, you know, it's been a while. Last time we met was like, oh, I don't know, 10 months ago, 12 months ago. So I think it was high time that we did it. And it was very important despite the kind of the resources that we, uh, we put into it. So I think it definitely was worth it. The group that I led uh, was very involved, very active. Uh, I think, you know, we may not have had as many people as the first time around. I think we clearly didn't. We had, I don't know probably twice as many last time around. Um, but um, it's always great to have a group that is really engaged and involved and interacting uh, in the ideas and about the ideas. So I think it was a really good thing to do. And the next step is to take some of the suggestions that were made in those meetings and really make them concrete. I think it's very important uh, to do that, um, to not, you know, considering the resources we have, to do that as soon as possible, to take the next step and not, not wait too long. Um, I think that's it. Okay. Those are my reflections on this meeting. Okay. okay. Um, yes, I, th I thought it was a good meeting as well. Um, I did seek some feedback and also got some unsolicited feedback. Uh, and it seemed, interestingly, as if there were maybe a couple camps there uh, there were some, you know, kind of veterans of the whole process of the Urban Art Program Plan who uh, expressed a little bit of frustration about, you know, the, the speed of the development of some of these things. I think particularly a lot of people thought that there would be more visuals in the city at this time. Um, and uh, they were frustrated with the idea of the breakout group. Um, that, you know, we've had this discussion already, these discussions, so why are we doing it again? Not too many of those. Um, the majority of the people I talked to uh, said they thought it was really great and really needed, and um, it kind of gave me the impression that they would like to see it again, and they also said, gee, I wish I could have gone to, uh, I think three people I talked to said, I wish I could have, like, floated around and gone to all the groups because I was really interested in all of it, but I had to make a choice. Uh, so that was that was great to hear, and I also think that um, we should, uh, echoing uh, uh, Commissioner Oshigan's comment, we should get on this and summarize uh, the input that we got from the four breakout groups and agendize this for February, um, have a discussion, and then talk about how we can uh, maybe incorporate some of these ideas into um, our plans going forward. So all in all, thumbs up. I also thought it was a really great evening. Um, and I want to thank and compliment, um, well, you were then Chair Medor, <laughs> but now, now you aren't. But now you're nothing. But I'm, you, I'm a nobody <laughs> you were the chair at that time. Um, because I felt that your overview, besides just being very engaging and, and beautifully articulated, was a very good um, sort of launch pad for the discussions that ensued at the at the um, breakout sessions. Um, <clears throat> our particular break our our particular group was very large, what was your and um, we had the citywide um, okay. commissioner Oshigan and I were at the table with the citywide arts um, discussion, and and I noted that for a lot of that time, people were very preoccupied with process. They really wanted to know the process. And I think there was a little bit of a um, misunderstanding about what our goal was at that, at, at, uh, that table. We really wanted to hear from them, not their complaints about the <laughs> slowness, which we also heard, mm -hmm. but just um, what, they would what their vision is of, the, um, mm -hmm. of citywide arts. And I, Again, I too felt like it would have been nice to have been able to move, but I'm not from session to session, but I just, it's I don't think that's practical um, for that kind of a, an event. Um, but, but all in all, well done, thank you. Uh, I learned a lot. <laughs> it's actually a great event for you to uh, attend it, as a newer commissioner. It was, it was a good, yes, it was a good tutorial. Um, I thought it was a great event. I love the way that then Chair Vidor kind of led it like a TED talk. That's what it felt like. And I thought it, it was, 
immediate, much more um, interesting. And uh, I think people were engaged. I was in charge of the um, neighborhood art and I got a lot of good feedback from people. A lot of the things we discussed were the types of neighborhoods, what is like neighborhood art, are we doing this, is indoors arts considered neighborhood art, is it, um, you know, what is it? So I kind of tried to explain that we're, we're looking for specific neighborhoods to focus on. And I think the two neighborhoods we came down to were the Montreux shopping area and South Glendale. South Glendale right now is obviously anything south of the 134, but I think what we were referring to was the e extremely um, high propensity areas of Glendale with uh, where there's not a lot of parks, there's no art at the moment, and um, it's, it has a lot of potential. And Montrose is a great idea because, first of all, it's part of Glendale, but most people don't realize that it's part of Glendale because it's like the Wild West over there. But they, they're they engaged as well. They're just as engaged as Adams Hill, but maybe not as much into Glendale affairs. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way to incorporate them. And it would be easier because they do have a shopping association and those relationships can be made. And um, so I think those are two great... Uh, neighborhoods. So that I think is a great way to move forward into the new year on what to focus on. And if you guys do agree with that, we can start moving forward with those two and agendize ideas. And also an idea that was brought forward is how do we engage the community? Because we're not going to say, hey, we have all this money, we're going to throw it at you. And this is what art is. It's more of what does the community want? What do people in the community want to see when they're driving around? And I think um, as an idea that I came up with on my own, just from my own experience in political campaigns, is you take a poll, you go around, you see what people want. That's what city council does when they have an idea that they want to bring forward. And so I think that might be a great idea to see what the people of South Glendale want to see, what the people of Montrose want to see, either with a poll or some sort of even social media way to get people engaged and give us their ideas. Now, yes, people outside of the area could give their opinion, but... Um, I want to see what the people living in these areas want. So if anybody else has an opinion on that, we can discuss. Um, we can, can go we, out of order can now. Can we now? go out of order? Are we, is it a discussion we, item, correct? Can we discuss this? Okay. We can discuss. Can we? Mm -hmm. um, actually, I, I think I was lobbied before I was even appointed. I think I was lobbied right in City Hall by, um, by a Montrose person. They have a concept that that they would already, they're already thinking in those mm -hmm. terms um, and would like to to um, have see some action and so some support. So maybe we can connect and yes. discuss and have them come to our meetings and right. give their input during um, oral communications. Okay. That, if you can that reach can out and yes, have I, them do that yes. for our next February meeting, that would be great. Yes, I, that can I've be done. Pardon? I've also been in contact with the Montrose uh, Shoppers Association and, that's, and have invited them to come and make public comment well, as well. Well, that's so who we can it continue was. continue to do that. Yeah. Okay. And, and thank you. Okay. Thank you. So that's done, right? And then, okay. Thank you. Okay. So do we... I, go ahead. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And that's the whole purpose of, the, I think, the Neighborhood Arts uh, Initiative mm -hmm. is not to have some overall, some something from above or some place from outside coming in. But this is the neighborhood. These are the people who live there, the kind of art that they want to create. So uh, I think, I, you know, definitely that's the way. It's citywide arts has got a different kind of concept behind it, right? Um, but in terms of doing a poll, I don't know. Do we have the resources to do a poll? Or how do we, you know, I think we should maybe meet with some stakeholders in the area. For instance, there's the, there's the farmer's market, right, in Montrose? Yes. That happens how often? Once, Once a, a week month? on Sundays. Every week, right? Mm -hmm. And so lots of people go. I mean, and that's some place that we can engage. You know, with performing arts or even like a temporary installation of some sort. So that's an obvious, and people are coming there. We don't have to bring them. So that's that's one way to engage Montrose, I think. It would be a great way to do it. But yeah. I mean, there's the um, idea of tabling, but that's very expensive at the Montrose shopping, uh, Montrose farmer's market. To have a table there and to, as people pass by, ask them what they want. Mm. It's an idea, but it is, ex I know it's pricey. That's the only issue. Well, I think, well, yeah, maybe, but we should try to do some kind of performance there, for instance. I don't know if they have performances. I don't know if they do. Um, they do. They, they have do. live performers. There's they have usually the performers. a band that performs there. So, you know, we could get engaged in that or, or do some kind of one-day art installation. 
the Rights of the Cultural Commission will have some kind of presence there. And then if we get that kind of relationship going and we can do a day-long day art installation, or actually, what is it, four hours, three hours, whatever, however long it is? Or a few months. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Temporary, Temporary art, art installation. Well, I'm talk, I'm, uh, my idea was during the event. the event, during the farmer's market, where you have lots of people coming. Yeah. But the temporary art, there would be something different, definitely, obviously. Mm -hmm. Then we could, at the same time, get a poll if we okay. there. So it's an idea. Can I make another? Yes. Um, uh, adding on to that on the subject of neighborhoods, um, I think it would be a really, this is a very passive way to spread information, but I, I've been going around and just as I drive around or walk around taking pictures of places in South Glendale where there might be a little bit of space to kind of, um, focus people on something. If it could be a greenway, it could be a um, you know, a median strip, it can be a little micro park or something. And um, I've also gone around because I'm interested in what we've done with the website and I think we can use our website and social media to really spread the word on things. I've taken now twenty pictures and I never thought I'd get twenty out of it. Mm -hmm. But it's art that's on in public view. Some of it is developers, some of it is private property, some of it is city. Um, but we have an opportunity to put a little gallery up of some of the things that are happening, including, of course, the, the temporary, I'm not even including, including Adams Square in this. It's just things, uh, murals, sculptures, different things that uh, one is in a hotel. You know, very small, very insignificant, but nonetheless, it's art. And maybe we need to just engage everybody in, look what's going on in the city. Why don't you become a part of it? So perhaps, even though it's not the most in-your-face opportunity, that might be a way also to start to get it out there, to you know, have a gallery of existing art, um, no matter whose it is. Uh, on, on the website, you know, to, to kind of appropriate the bragging rights for what people are doing. Just a thought. Okay. Any more comments? No? Okay. Great. Then we can move forward to the next item. Great. Uh, so staff is also under the citywide arts update. Staff has begun drafting an RFQ for iconic artwork consultant and will work with the city attorney's office on next steps regarding the proposal. Staff will prevent, present the commission with a draft RFQ at the next commission meeting on February 20th, 2020. Uh, under neighbor neighborhood arts, staff will be working with artist Diane Williams to install a new temporary art installation at the Adams Square. Oh, did you have? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Sure. So iconic artwork, so um, <coughs> this is temporary or permanent? Is the um, RFQ is specifying what? The RFQ as we have it right now is specifying temp both temporary and permanent iconic art. Both. Both. The, icon the, the consultant would specifically work uh, with under the guise of the iconic artwork, such as the gateway, so that's permanent long-term art, but also um, with the possibility of temporary artwork art, so like digital projections or things like that. So the way it's drafted right now, it would come to review for the commission. If it's not under the commission's perfect purview of what that envision for the, the uh, art, the work would look like for the consultant, we can edit it, but as of right now, it's both. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I'll continue with, uh, so staff will be working with artist Diane Williams to install a new temporary art installation at the Adams Square Mini Park gas station, which will be on display February 18th through the 13th, uh, uh, March 13th of 2020. Performing Arts staff has be released the performance arts applications for the 2020 season of 222 East Concert Series and Brand Library Plaza Series. The application is currently open and will close on January 31st, 2020. Um, arts and Cultural Events. Staffers release the Glendale Art Walk RFP, and the deadline is tomorrow, Friday, January 17th at, two, at 5 p.m. And last, we have estimated spending through December 31st, 2019. Staff has created an Urban Arts Program 2019 work plan update, which includes anticipated spending uh, of the Urban Arts Fund through the calendar year of 2019. Okay. Yep. Um, I, I know that a few of you have comments, but Question, yeah. So how many applications do we have for the art walk? We have one that was <laughs> literally being dropped off during the meeting, so I know of <laughs> one applicant. Uh, one applicant decided not to apply. Uh, we had four, let me back mm. up, four people expressed interest in applying for the RFP. 
one has uh, dropped off their application during the meeting, one has decided not to apply, and the other two I think are in process and are gonna drop off their applications on Friday. So we would have technically three applicants. That's, yeah. I'm surprised a little bit that we didn't get them that many more applicants. It's, it's what do you think that is? It's a very specific <coughs> um, event management firm that we're looking for. It's not necessarily a specific artist call that we could put out. Sure. Um, only very few event management firms specifically work within the arts and specifically working with an art walk and what we hope to anticipate with the RFP through the art walk. Um, so I think that's why we had a, l a lower number of applicants interested. Interesting. So in your opinion, that's that's okay. It's not. This is kind of in the ballpark of what you would yeah, expect. In, yeah. In my opinion, I've always been taught that you know you don't need 50 applications. You just need one really good applicant. <laughs> yeah. So if we have the one really good applicant, I think we're in a, in a good ballpark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will we be able to know um, you know who the applicants are and maybe express an opinion or see see their RFP? Yes, we're gonna meet with the chair to talk about next steps. Um, but it would be a dependent on the chair and how to move forward um, with the final decision of the RFP. Um, I have a comment on the performing arts. Um, it, it was it called to my attention by somebody from the community that the call for uh, performing arts for the Plaza series at the Brand Library uh, includes the months of June and July, which would be eight performances. And uh, previously we had done June, July, and August and had 13 to 14 performances and the a uh, commitment to 13 to 14 performances is actually stated in the work plan as um, a commitment that we've made. Um, uh, unfortunately, I think, uh, a decision was made to reduce the program based on a couple of things, is my understanding, and I'll say what I think, and I think there has to be further discussion because my concern as I looked into this was that um, the commission was not, um, consulted uh, with the final decision to reduce the program. Uh, there's been some issue about the quality of the musicians, not all of them, you know, it's a it's varied quality and that we needed to, to up our stipend per performance and that we would make a trade-off between the cost, the additional cost, and the number of performances. We're talking about anywhere from two to four thousand dollars more to continue with 13 performances and give the musicians more money and the decision was made to trade the performances for the higher stipend. Um, I think that is a decision that should have come to the Commission for discussion. I think it should have been discussed publicly because this is one of the most uh, well attended and popular events in the city during the summer. and. Um, I think that there are some issues with the logistics at the Brand Library of supporting such a complicated thing, putting up a, a stage, which is not easy, and just getting the whole thing organized every Friday night. But I felt, um, I'll use some strong language here, I felt a little bit blindsided um, by the fact that this decision was not made um, with uh, the commission and was made by staff, and I think the, the community will react to this because it is a popular program and there's no explanation forthcoming as to why we've gone down from, uh, from 13 to eight. And I don't necessarily think that an additional two to $4,000, whatever we would decide to increase the stipend is prohibitive given the amount of money we have in our urban art program plan. So, that's my concern. I would like to agendize this for February or ask the, um, with respect to the chair, to consider agendizing the issue. And I would like to hear the reactions of my fellow commissioners about this decision. This is for 222s, correct? No, no, this or is Brand, Brand Library Brand. Plaza series. Okay. Previously a three month um, endeavor, uh, 13 performances, now down to eight. No, it doesn't say that in the work plan. The work plan is, oh, okay. is what the work plan is, that we've committed to this number of performances. There was a decision made, I'm not sure by who, it could be the staff of Brand Library. I, I don't know how the decision was made, but we were not involved in the decision to reduce from 13 to eight performances. Um, maybe can we first ask staff to clarify before we make any more comments? Yeah. 
So first of all, thank you, Trevor Dor, for bringing this up. <laughs> now yeah. I'm like, I'm getting confused <laughs> who's yeah, chair and who's it's fine. Chair. It's fine. Commissioner Trevor Dor, Dor for, <laughs> for bringing this uh, to light and this comment to light. Um, from, we can definitely ask uh, Chair Zadorian if we can agendize this for the next February meeting to discuss further. I know we're having a time constraint um, in regards to the meeting time. Um, but the main constructive reasoning for minimizing the concert series was because staff time was not in consideration. Staff time cannot be um, taken out from the Urban Art Fund. So, um, for example, we have library staff such as um, our audio technician who does all the concerts for Brand Library. His time is not allocated as part of the Urban Art Fund, nor can it be transferred to the staff time for the city of Glendale. So that's another incurred cost that we're going to have to um, look forward to to this next coming year. Um, another part was that um, the stage itself um, is on its, la <laughs> sorry for the pun, last leg. Um, <laughs> and we need to think about that for the future years in regards to making sure that we have a secure platform for the artists and the staff and all the, the um, people in attendance for the, the concert series. So there were a lot of things that were in consideration for why the concert series was uh, trimmed. It was also noticed from staff that uh, when the concerts went from uh, all the way to August that there was a bit of a dip in attendance due to the heat. Mm -hmm. So that was also a concern. We also had um, staff members say that there were people, older people who were overheating, um, sitting out in the sun during the plaza. Um, so there were different considerations, but the main consideration was the staff time and how much that is taken out of the library budget that can't be um, allocated from the Urban Art Fund specifically. So that it's the actual cost of the brand library series is much bigger than the 30,000 that's allocated within the work plan. So we were looking at the 30,000 that was allocated. Um, and when we put into account um, audio technicians and staff time, it's much, much bigger than the 30,000 that was already allocated mm -hmm. and approved by city council. Mm -hmm. um, Femi, um, who was paying for these things last year? For the audio tech and the staff? And staff was all coming out of, even my salary is coming out of the library's department's fund. No staff time can be allocated towards the Urban Art Fund. Okay. So because of that, we're going to decrease the amount because we cannot pay for it through the Urban Art Fund. Based okay. on the $30,000 budget, there was no way that we could allocate more okay. um, because that was already pre-approved by City Council. Okay. So is the budget remaining 30000 The budget is for the 2019-2020 work plan is 30000 for the brand library <coughs> deposit series. Okay. And this stage that you're seeing is basically on its last leg. It is. Um, so this year mm -hmm. we're going to, I'm assuming, replace it. We don't have any funds specifically to replace the stage. So we are going to work with the stage that we currently have or possibly look for an alternative location. But as of right now, um, it is a hazard to have the, the stage as it is. So isn't that dangerous to host an event if it's hazardous? <laughs> it is, and the, the hardship also, which is not only on the brand library staff, is also that the stage is reconstructed every single time, every single concert. So every time you reconstruct the stage, as you can imagine, parts can be damaged, things can be not put back together well. Thus, the stage has not been in its best form of being kept. OK. So is there any plan to replace it anytime soon? This is a discussion we can bring up uh, in the in the next, in the future February agen agenda meeting. Um, if you would like to allocate funds specifically for a new stage or how we can proceed to move this forward. But as of right now, there is no funding specified to have a new stage or to purchase a new stage as part of the is brand library series. This is, you're referring to through the program, the urban art plan, right. not through the library right. to fund a stage mm -hmm. at the library? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I have one more comment, um, and that is that there is, um, you know, I don't want to put anybody on the spot because the group is not here, but there is a support group, uh, the Brand Associates, that supports the library, and in the past has supplemented the funding of this. And there's been a lot of discussion in that group about crowdsourcing for specific issues that are of need at the Brand Library rather than uh, going into a fundraising campaign using social media to fill gaps <coughs> where there is no funding. And it had never come up, which is interesting. I mean, obviously, there are a lot of things that factored into the decision here, the you know problem with the stage and all these other issues. And it seems like perhaps we could have somehow helped to get on top of that and maybe work with a, our 
partners at the Brand Library to solve some of these problems before it was necessary for us to reduce um, the things. So same issue again, like we, you know, we need to stay informed and be able to get on top of these things before they, we stumble over them. Yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised actually at this, at what happened here, um, because I would argue that that series is the most successful art series that this commission has done over the last number of years. Mini, mini, the, the gas station, Mini Park is also very successful, but I think that reaches a smaller audience, but that place is packed a whole summer long typically, right? So I'm, I'm really surprised and I think it's gonna reflect poorly on, on the commission itself if one of the most successful, so we have all this money, right? We've mm -hmm. gone, gotten a plan, two years has taken us we haven't really done much at all with all this money that we've been meeting and, and having meetings and doing all this. And suddenly now, if we decrease our most successful art programming, seems like a very bad idea to me. Um, there are good reasons, obviously, and I appreciate all the details that you have given us, Jennifer, about that. And, and maybe that is the final decision that one can make, but here, you know, I think the, the real issue here is why the commission was not consulted not, not consulted, but uh, consultation maybe perhaps is not the right word, but to bring the issue to the commission and say, here are the issues. Do you guys believe in this program? Do you want to allocate another $30,000 to keep it going? And then, you know, maybe we would have discussed, we would have said yes, and then that would have solved, I mean, uh, to, to solve the staff problem, you could hire a consultant or hire a production crew to come and set up the stage every time, right? So that's going to cost, I don't know, couple of thousand, so then that's a budget. So it's really, um, it's really a budgetary issue completely. So you can always solve the staffing issue through a budget mm -hmm. solution. Yeah. Yes. And we have a lot of money that we're not spending, and I think it would have been much more prudent, uh, and I don't know if it's possible to reverse or to bring it to the commission to speak about uh, and, you know, I mean, if we bring up all these issues and we say we would like to allocate another $20,000 to this program, take it to the city council, I don't think the city council is going to say no, no. Because they all know the, the value of this program that we have. So I don't know how it, we can sort of mm -hmm. uh, repair this, but I think it's really important that it comes to us and so that we can look at it and allocate more funds if that's what's necessary to keep it going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I also will add that I... Um, I, the reason this came to light, I actually didn't read this either, but in, in the call, the public call for perform, performers, it says June and July, and I, I thought that was a typo. So um, the person who wrote me an email kind of complaining, like, why is the commission doing this? I said, well, I, I, the commission didn't do this, so it must be, a mis it must be an error, <laughs> and obviously it isn't. Um, so I think we, we need to do what we can to get on top of this. Of course, after that, I immediately called the treasurer uh, of the brand associates because the treasurer of the brand associates knows every discussion that's happened when it involves money. And uh, this is not anything that ever came to that support group uh, for consideration of is there something they can do uh, to supplement the income here. So, um, you know, I, again, just... Um, reaffirming that we we have to take some steps to rectify this. I think we should put it on the agenda for next meeting. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and want to agendize, agendize it and ask the staff to give us a report yes. as to why the decision was made and how what are the different options that we have it's just not certainly there's no one option there's probably three or four different yeah. venues the different ways to solve this issue and so we'd like to look at those and see you know, I personally, as I said, it's the most successful thing that we've done as a commission, so I would really like to keep supporting it for our community. Second that. Um, and so let's agendize it, but along with the report as to why and how this happened, mm -hmm. um, I want to break down of the cost of these audio techs that, uh, let's say, from last year, from previous years. So <coughs> break down of the cost that um, we took out initially and... Um, a stage, like what, what the plan is for this stage exactly, because I'm trying to understand, if, so we're repairing it or are we buying a new one? And if so, your 
recommending that we as a commission fund it through the urban art plan um, and does that mean that every year we have to continue compensating to repair it or is it a one-time fee I mean if we can get a report of the details of why this happened how it happened and the cost breakdown that would be great yeah I'll, I would respectfully invite uh, our colleagues at the brand library to come and make a report as they're on the ground and boots on the ground and know exactly what's happening with the plaza series and the stage okay so we can invite them to thank come you. okay thank you mm -hmm. any more comments no okay then we can move on to the next item Item seven, commission staff comments. I have some comments, but are you going to start on the right this time? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm start on the right. <laughs> <laughs> I have the pressure. <laughs> Would you like to go ahead and start, Commissioner Bayer? I really don't have any comments, except I really enjoyed the student art today. I thought that was fabulous uh, activity for us, and um, and I support whatever we need to do to to um, repair or restore a stage or. Uh, get the uh, <clears throat> excuse me the staffing mm -hmm. to um, to restore the um, performing arts program at brand back to back to its original level yeah um, I have j just one comment because it's I, I don't think it's on the agenda anywhere but I, I would like if possible um, and I you know beg for this very respectfully because I know how much work went into doing uh, the website but in reviewing it, utilizing it, and uh, seeing what's on the website uh, that's immediately clickable versus double and triple clicks, um, I'd like to have another um, reassessment of the site and see, since it's already up and working, if there's anything additional we can do on an ongoing basis to enhance it. Um, I still think it's a little bit de deprived of visuals. Uh, the thing mentioned before about adding um, adding existing public art all over Glendale, some kind of a gallery, and maybe make some of the double clickables just clickable right on the front page. So if we could maybe, um, I don't know if it's an agenda item or not, but maybe everybody could take another look at it. And I've written a long thing and I didn't want to bring it today because I've been looking at it every day and kind of coming up with ideas and that could turn into a real morass but I still think it's something that could has not realized its potential yet um, and we should continue to assess it on an ongoing basis a uh, couple of things first of all uh, first uh, I'd like to agendize a possible discussion about this group called architects of air where they they bring these big uh, floating spaces of mm -hmm. color and light into uh, communities, um, I will send I will send Jennifer some information about this organization, and they do really tremendous. So it's like this kind of they create these caves, and you walk into the cave, and it's really kind of interesting with lights and mm -hmm. and color, and it and it really creates an interesting space and a focal point. So we could do something, invite them to do a uh, installation for us. It, anywhere really and it could be maybe move around Glendale and so it'd be mm -hmm. I'd like to really see if we could if this commission likes that the idea then we could have maybe the staff reach out and see when it's possible mm -hmm. to bring them here what you say it's called Archite architects of air air so um, it's these I don't know what they're, they're, they're air spaces they're the balloons kind of that you walk into their cave kind of balloons. it's, really it's temporary yeah, yeah, it's temporary. So Grant Park, downtown LA, had it for, I think, for a week, like three, a couple of years ago. Uh, and people lining up to go in them. You know, it's really an interesting thing. Okay. Um, if we could put that on the agenda. The, the other thing is I wanted to uh, thank ex-chair uh, the door for her tenure. Well, thank you. <laughs> the one-year tenure at, as, as chair of this commission. It was at times tumultuous, at times yeah. not so. Um, she is a true advocate, I think, for the arts and passionate in yes. it. Uh, yeah. Advocate not only Maybe in insane. terms of being, okay, insane is good, yeah. yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> not only being outspoken, which she is, which is very, very, which is critical. And I would get maybe an email or a text at any time of day or night yeah. from her, which is yeah. always. Good. <laughs> but, but she was also she put where she put her money where her mouth is. She was yeah. very active, not only speaking out but also going and seeing and talking, and and making our commission an important part of this community. Mm 
So we really appreciate that, and we appreciate your effort and energy that you, and dedication Thank you put you to this, into this commission. Thank you very much. I, will, uh, I, I would like to add something to that because it, you know, somebody mentioned TED Talk. Um, <laughs> and um, after that January 9th meeting, when people were just milling about and talking, there, there was just a tremendous amount of talk about the intersection between technology, you know, the idea of STEAM, you know, instead of STEM, STEAM with the A in there. Mm. And I think there's so much opportunity for us to partner with other departments in the city, particularly economic development, which really has their arms around the tech piece and the wonderful things that happened at those uh, temporary gallery spaces on Artsakh Plaza, and really expand that whole intersection because we are a tech city, we're an animation city, and we're an art city. And that's where art is going, you know, that's the zeitgeist right now, steam. <laughs> yeah. So we should maybe even look at the possibility, and I know Commissioner Oshigan had, had experience in, with his own TED Talks, in maybe working as a community and in partnership with other departments and commissions to get the TED process going here. I think it would stimulate a lot of really interesting conversation. So, TED. <laughs> Come get us. <laughs> One more comment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or a few minutes. So I want to welcome current chair. Yes. Is that the <laughs> She's going to be great. Um, it'll be tumultuous at times. It'll be <laughs> calm at times. <laughs> we Same. hope it's tumultuous. You know, like I think tumult. that means we're doing things. You know, yeah, when yeah. you are doing things in, in the world, in the community, and you get feedback, well, it's not always going to be great. It's not always going to be positive, which is always good that way, I think. Right? So. Um, I hope, I know you have the same kind of dedication and definitely the same kind of passion and advocacy for the arts. And so I'm looking forward to moving, really taking the next huge step, which is critical year next year. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to have RFPs out. You're going to have a lot of consultants coming into the city, and it's going to be critical year. And I'm sure you're going to guide us along the helm very nicely. So welcome. Yes, thank you. Know you. that. Thank You're going to do a great job. Mm -hmm. You know it. Thank you. Um, um, I guess, is, is that all? That's mine, yeah. Okay. Um, I will go ahead and just agree with everybody. Let's go ahead and agendize uh, the Brown Plaza discussion we already had, uh, discussion that we are going to have, and um, go ahead and agendize the architects of area that Ara, go ahead, uh, sorry, Commissioner Oshagan brought up. Sorry. <laughs> um, and I love the idea of a TED Talk. I think that's a great idea. Uh, on top of many other things, I love the idea of tech and art. Um, so working with economic development, but also this year, let's. I the idea is to work with lots of different commissions as well as departments. So the Parks Commission, um, Economic Development, Parks Department, and see what we can do with the arts. Because yes, we have the money. Let's figure out how to spend it, and so that people are in the community are happy, they're pleased, they see art every day, and we make one step, one we get one step closer to making Glen, Glendale an art hub. So. Mm -hmm. I hope that's the process we're in. We're in the middle of it. Let's let's get it done. Okay. Thank you. Uh, did you have any comments? No. Okay. Next item. Item eight: written, written communications. There is none. Item nine: adjournment. Okay. And we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.